So when did he say the plants were coming? Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Six weeks? Six weeks? We can't have this cold for six bloody weeks. What do you mean? He, he's the smithy. He's supposed to make parts. What do you mean they're on the boat from China? Oh, are you kidding me? He's a, he, he makes stuff. Why hasn't he got that in stock? Oh, for crying out loud. Bloody hell, useless bloody brother. Hello. How are you? You're back. You're back. I know what you're back for. You're back for the lamentable tragedy of Richard III. Aren't you? Yeah, you are. You are. I know you are. I, 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 this is a really good one. This one is a really, really good one. Now, you have to understand that there is a terrible amount of Tudor propaganda in this play. That's the first thing you have to understand. The second thing you have to understand is that the Milwaukee family players, for some, I have no idea what reason, seem to be under the impression that this, that, that, that Richard is a villain. And I keep telling them that he is clearly, clearly a tragic king. But no, they keep telling me he's a villain. They say, it's in the first soliloquy. And I keep saying, oh, can't you see what he's doing? He is sacrificing himself for the good of the country. But they don't believe me. Personally, I think they should think again about who pays their wages, feeds them, clothes them, allows them to perform before they go telling me what the play means. So, apologies for the cold. Still waiting for parts. You think he'd be able to manufacture his own. But anyway, so Richard III. <laughs> Richard III. This is a great play, a great play about a tragic king. So England has been at war with itself for ever so long. The Yorks and the Lancasters have been tearing each other to pieces. That's Henry VI, part one, two, and three. So we'll have a look at those at some point. And finally, the, the House of York has succeeded and Edward is on the throne. Richard has spent most of his youth fighting this war to get his brother onto the throne. But he knows, he knows his brother Edward is not a well man. He has two young sons, but far too young to inherit the throne. And he has a dodgy, dodgy wife. This is not a good situation. He also knows that his younger brother, George, Duke of Clarence, his elder brother, but one, the middle one, George, Duke of Clarence, has betrayed them during the war and he is not sound. He betrayed them to the Lancasters and then came back when he saw that his, the people he had started to back were losing. So not good at all. And Richard has been telling his brother of this and has, has influenced him, not directly, there has been a prophecy that says, by G shall the king be disinherited. Well, since the Duke of Clarence's name is George, the Duke of Clarence is locked up in the tower. Meanwhile, Hastings, who has been locked up in the tower, is now been released by the efforts of Richard, having been said nasty things against the queen or the queen's brother and son who got him locked in the tower in the first place because the whole court is at each other's throats 
there are the Queen's backers and the King's backers and then there are random Lancastrians around and Queen Margaret's there. Very uncomfortable, the deposed Queen still lurking around the castle. She's meant to be banished. She just won't leave. So it's a very, very messy sort of domestic situation. And the king, the king's ill and he's just not up to it. So Clarence is now locked in the tower and Richard has promised to help him because he's not going to help him. He's not going to help him. That won't help the country. That won't improve any situation here. That will only make it worse. So, but the, 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 the court is in uproar. The king is unwell. Margaret is spouting nastiness everywhere she goes. And Richard is trying to hold all of this together. Meanwhile, the old king is being buried and his daughter-in-law, Princess Anne, or the Lady Anne, she was the former princess, she was married, or she was married to one of the king's, the king's son, and he was killed by Richard because, you know, it was war. But she's really full of spite and she, Richard comes, he decides that he's going to make a union between these two houses by marrying Anne. Because obviously that will help. But she's, she's very, very angry at him and she curses him and, and things and he, he woos her. He woos her over the coffin of the dead king. So, the fact that she falls for it is, well, let's just say I have no sympathy for Anne. She deserves everything she gets. He really could have had another wife, but he chose her. And rather than make the best of it, she spends the rest of her time moaning. A little wonder he gets rid of her later on. Gosh, someone who moans like that. So... You know, I mean, Clytemnestra made the best of it with Agamemnon. Sure, she killed him like a pig when he came back from the wars, but that was no less than he deserved. Really, he was a pig. He's down here somewhere. Don't know quite what he does. But he was a pig. But so he woos and wins the favour of Lady Anne, which is really quite remarkable. And he assumes that he mustn't be as bad looking as he thinks he is and everyone assumes he is. So this done, he, the, Queen Margaret, he goes to court to see his brother who's very ill. Queen Margaret spouts off nastiness. Rivers and Grey are being annoying. The Queen, everyone is squabbling, squabbling. Until, the, until Margaret goes and spouts off her poison and suddenly all their squabbles are silenced. And Richard goes and after they all go in to see the king, Richard hands the warrant for Clarence's death to gentlemen or the executioners who presently go to the tower to execute said warrant. Though Richard does warn them not to let Clarence talk to them because Clarence is honey-tongued and duplicitous and he will try and get out of it. Clarence meanwhile has had an absolute shit of a night in the tower, so he deserves. He's feeling really bad because he's, you know, kind of knows he deserves what he's getting having betrayed his family because as anybody can tell you, don't go against the family. Anyone could tell you that. You don't have to be Italian to know that one. 
So he's gone against the family and the executioners come in and he does talk. They do let him talk to them, which is a big mistake because one of them wants to just completely bottles it, but the other one kills him. So now, now George Clarence out of the way. So now that means one down, still more to go, but one down between Richard and the kingdom. Now, the reason he is doing this is because neither of his brothers are sound. The country has been through huge civil wars, brutal civil wars. Richard is trying, trying to bring peace to the land. He is a, he is a, he is a great peacemaker. He is a tragic, tragic king. Tragic king. And so, the shock, it, it, they go and they're see it, visiting with the king. The king thinks he's been doing a wonderful job making up between Richard and Rivers and the different factions within the court. When suddenly he hears word that Clarence has been executed. And this shocks him to the core because he thought that he had put the countermand in. But as Richard tells him, the countermand was too slow and the first one was very fast. And so the first was executed before the second the pardon could reach. Oops. This is why you shouldn't be too rash. And the king is so upset and he's terribly, terribly regret remorseful for what he has done and he tells off all these noblemen who have helped persuade him to go against his brother and and he 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 really he, his health takes a turn for the worse and he dies frankly if his health was that bad then you know richard did everyone a favor because all that's left now Two little boys, two little boys. And they're not gonna be any use to a kingdom that is only recently unified because that's how this started in the first place, was a child king. Child king, not a great idea. You need to have a bit of experience. We'll have a look at Richard II. We'll have a look at Richard II as well. But this one, now Richard is now named he has this, he now has a co a help in the form of Buckingham. Buckingham is a great friend of Richard and a really great counsel. And he does as he's told. He's sound. He's a sound man. At least we think he's a sound man. So, um, so Richard is made Lord Protector, being the uncle of these two boys, which very much upsets their mother, Lady Grey. But who is she? She is some woman that his brother found on the battlefield or somewhere, and she has been rapidly ennobling all of her kinsmen, which is just ridiculous. So there's all these new people in there. Now, you can't... Because she has been in no, rapidly ennobling all her kinsmen, these people have to be got rid of. They're not sound. They're not family. Not family. And already family wasn't sound. So they're not to be trusted. So Richard has Buck orders Buckingham to dispose of Rivers and Grey, Anne's brother and her son by a previous marriage. So now we have two more uncles gone for those princes, which leaves Richard solely as Lord Protector. So Anne, or not Anne, Elizabeth, the Queen, hearing that, well, she's not Queen anymore, well, sorts of Queen Mother, hearing that her sons are being called for and that her brothers have been killed, she flees to, she takes her sons and, or one of her sons, and takes them to sanctuary because she's in fear of her life. So she should be. Silly woman. 
but she takes them into sanctuary. Richard says, no, no, I want the children to come to the court to be, to be before their co for the coronation. And there is no such thing as sanctuary for a child. There is a sanctuary man and the child has done no, nothing bad. So he has no cause to call for sanctuary. So the children are brought and they are put for the safety, their own safety. They are sent to the tower where they can be looked after for their own safety, especially since their mother is quite crazy and has gone and fled for sanctuary when there is no cause to. So Buckingham is now sent to sound out Hastings and Stanley. Hastings and Stanley who are other lords that Richard needs to guarantee his position. He also sends Catesby. Catesby becomes a new important advisor or right-hand man. Right-hand man. And so Buck sending to Buckingham, who Buckingham is sent to Hastings, who says, although he is very glad that Rivers and Grey are gone and dead, he is not going to support Richard. Stanley, mind you, Stanley so dislikes Richard that he has gone to the north with his wife's nephew, Richmond, Henry Tudor. And he, Henry Tudor, Richmond, is raising an army and this is why. This is precisely why this play is so riddled with assumptions that Richard is the bad one. Now, let me, let me explain why he isn't. Let me explain. I will use, I'll use an example from my own family history. My own family history. So, my father, Uncle Zeus, Back before my generation of gods were born, my f grandfather, my grandfather Cronos, my grandfather Cronos had decided to start eating his children. And he did. He ate lots of them. He ate lots of his children, which was not a good thing. Because And he did this because he believed that one of them would overthrow him. Of course, eating your children is going to more or less guarantee that one of them will overthrow you. And so he had eaten, eaten many, many, many of his children. And Zeus, Father Zeus, the youngest of all of those gods, all the high gods, he was spared. Meteus spared him, hid him, and gave Kronos a stone to swallow, which he swallowed thinking he'd swallowed the child. And Zeus, when Zeus grew up, he grew up and he was able to challenge Kronos and make Kronos spit out all the children that he had eaten, all his brothers and sisters. So Poseidon and my own husband Hades and my mother Demeter, Hera, um, Auntie Hester. It's not that many. He, 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 they weren't able to save that many. So they then were able to go to war against the Titans and lock them up, which is part of the reason why we were so annoyed when the, that big thing fell through and broke into Tartarus, because that's where the Titans are and we really can't let them out. We are important guardians of Titans. We do not let them out. So me, once, once the gods had managed to get rulers of everything, it wasn't as if my husband Hades said, I'm the eldest, therefore I should be king of the universe. Are you kidding? He didn't, he, he, they were all so terribly thankful for what Zeus had done at the great personal risk that they immediately elected him king of the gods. He deserved it. Sure, he was the youngest, 
but he had done more for the family, the family, than any of the others had been able to do. And so therefore he became king. Being eldest does not always guarantee that you will be king. Besides, Hades is quite happy down here as king of the underworld. And Poseidon is very happy as king of, king of the seas. They all have their realms, but in honour of Zeus's great sacrifice and heroism, he gets to be king. And this is what Richard, this is all Richard is doing. He is making sure for the stability of all that there is not these ructions. This is what makes him great. Tragic king. There has been wars, wars, nasty wars for ever so long. And he is trying to bring this to the country. So, the and Stanley, ungrateful Stanley, is plotting against him. And so too, Hastings is unwilling to submit because these people, these are Lancastrians and Lancastrians are not to be trusted. So when Richard hears that Hastings has not come his way, he arranges so that Hastings looks rather bad and can be executed. Stanley, however, has not turned up. Stanley has left for the north, which is not good. But Richard is not worried. Not yet. He is a strong king. The Lord Mayor of London is brought in and given a report of what an absolute traitor Hastings is and therefore why he had to be executed. And he's perfectly willing to take the, the, the Lord Protector and Buckingham's word for it. Buckingham is then sent out to put about amongst the people that, that um, things are not as they seem, that the, the children are not necessarily legitimate and that that even though his mother is still alive because he doesn't want to lean on this that Edward may not have been entirely legitimate that his father was in the wars when his mother had him and he had been in the wars quite some time and that he also did never looked very much like their father. So therefore, he puts this out. And when this is put out among the people, the, the people are come to him in the, in the town hall, in the London town hall. And, and Richard is aside. He is with two churchmen. And he has a, a prayer book and he is praying. And Buckingham, Buckingham, with the backing of people, though it's not the most enthusiastic backing, but he manages, he makes the most of it. Buckingham, with the backing of the people, presses, presses the kingship on a very reluctant Richard because one does not wish to appear too proud. Look at Coriolanus last time. Too proud, didn't end well. One does not wish to look too proud. One does not wish to look like one is seeking the throne. And so reluctantly, reluctantly, Richard is forced to accept, even though he is not in the vein of it, the crown for the good of the people. For the good of the people, not for his own deserts or desires. He does this for the betterment of the country. Of course, now that he is king, now that he is king, those children have to go. And he, he tells Buckingham this, and for some reason, well, Buckingham has no 
qualms against having grown men killed for some reason. He has a great deal of problems with two little brats. And they are brats. They're brats of the first order. And so when Richard tells him, I want them dead, he, he hums and he haws and he says, I have to think about it. And then, and then, huh, now this one, this one takes the cake. He then tells him, oh, but can I have those things you promised me for helping you? I mean, seriously, is he kidding? No, I'm going to have to think about doing this, but please, can I have the things that you promised me? I mean, the man's an idiot. That's not how things work. So now he knows that Buckingham is not sound. This is bad. It's a shame. Could not go be good for Buckingham. <laughs> you don't want to get on the wrong side of powerful people like that. Unless you really know what you're doing. Buckingham doesn't know what he's doing. However, it's not too hard to find some people to go up and make sure that the little children don't come back down again. Also, Queen Anne, Lady Anne, is, who has been miserable and complaining and bitching and moaning about being queen, well, it's her own fault. She cursed whoever became Richard's wife and then promptly became Richard's wife. So, you know, I have no sympathy for that woman. It is put out that the Queen is ill and may soon die. Yes, well, did we, are we surprised to see that one coming? No. No, we are not. So, the um, Richard thinks he's, he's, he should be okay. He should be okay now. Meanwhile, Elizabeth, the Lady Elizabeth, his, is fleeing to Rivers. Lord Stanley has gone to Rivers, but not openly. He's still hanging around the court. And Richard warns him, he warns him not to visit not to support Richmond because he has his younger son, George, in his care as a hostage. Hostages are very useful for reinforcing the loyalty of lords. Very, very useful. Very old custom. Usually it's fine, unless they decide to act up, in which case, that's the point of having a hostage. You don't mistreat them, though. They're quite happy in court, usually, when things are going well. <laughs> so, um, Elizabeth flee is fleeing, and Richard decides, Margaret has decided, ha ha, I've seen everything now, this is brilliant, I'm revenged, I'm pissing off to France. So, she's off, she's, she thinks she's had a wonderful time. Elizabeth is also has um, his her niece in her care, and she is who Richard has now decided he is going to marry next because it will help his throne because it is his niece, which is kind of uh, but yeah, I don't think he'll keep her long. Nevertheless. She, he now has to go and speak to her, which is, you know, he tries to frame it all in a, well, this is life, this is what it is. If you didn't want to get involved in the messy hand of politics, you probably shouldn't have married him. But anyway, this is how it is, and this is what I want you to do, and so do it. Buckingham, meanwhile, has left, has, has deserted Richard, and is taking troops with bringing troops down but they are so, he is soon captured and executed now richmond is now becoming a big problem 
Richmond has now amassed a force and he is coming, he is coming to challenge Richard. Richard, meanwhile, has a much bigger force. He's got three times the men and they are going to meet at Leicestershire on the Battle of Boswell. Battle of Boswell Field is where they will fight, but they're meeting at Leicestershire. And Richmond it has has support, and Stanley has told him that I will be, I will, I am still fighting at Rich at, on on Richard's side at present, but I will give you what support that I can because this is his nephew. Richard, meanwhile, is feeling pretty confident because he's got three times the men. He does have a rather nasty dream, though. Again, I told you. As I told you last time, ghosts don't exist. It's a nasty dream. Happens to the best of us. You wake up, you're all good. Rich is pretty confident. Rivers has meanwhile married Clarence's daughter, which is, you know, slight problem, but nevertheless, we can we can do, that can be dealt with, that can be dealt with. He's about to be killed on the battlefield anyway, so what does it matter? Unfortunately, although Richard fights valiantly and he fights, he fights to the end. He is unhorsed. He fights to the absolute brink. He does not leave. He is a fighting king. He is not going to go down peaceably. He is not going to be taken. He is not going to be ransomed and humiliated. He is going to die with his boots on. Stanley may have left him. The battle may have gone against him, but he is going to fight. And if he can fight and kill Richmond, then he can still win this battle. But tragically, Tragically, Richard, unhorsed, alone, is killed. And all he was trying to do was bring his country together and peaceably and end the fighting. The fighting does end, but not because the Tudors, Henry Tudor, is any great king, but merely because there's no opposition left. Richard had tried to bring everything together, but would they come? No. No, they would not let old enmities lie. No, they had to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep prolonging the civil war, not to accept that he was king, that they had won. No bringing more death and destruction to the people. It's, it's a terrible tragedy, terrible, terrible tragedy. And the biggest tragedy, painting Richard as such a villain, when really he was a good king. Sure, he killed a bunch of people, but what king doesn't? Anyway, that is the tragedy of Richard III. I know you object, but I don't care. That's how I read it. That is the tragedy of Richard III. I'll bring you something else when we meet again. Bye-bye.